They manually reviewed the video, seeing that it had a dead body in it, zooming in on the dead body, laughing about this suicide victim. They YouTube manually reviewed the video and didn't take it down. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. So we were talking about before the break, Jordan Peterson, the uh, professor in Canada, he did an interview with, with H3H3 podcast, which is a huge channel, obviously going to have millions of views of listeners cumulatively over the course of, you know, when people listen to this podcast. So he goes on there, he defends himself against the charge. I'll read out what they asked him. Quote, people associate you with pandering to white supremacists or worse. I've even seen the suggestion that you're a white supremacist yourself. How do you feel about that? That's why he was asked by the host. He responded, quote, I have 260 videos on YouTube, which must total at least 600 hours. By now, people have been over them essentially with a fine tooth comb. Virtually everything I've said to my students in the last 25 years is on video. And so if there's anything in there that is remotely associated with that, it would come out, said Peterson. So he went on to explain how he teaches uh, his students, the horrors of the Holocaust, the horrors of what happened in the Soviet Union, basically just defends himself against a ludicrous charge that he's a white supremacist. And for that, the video was censored in a bunch of different European countries, including the United Kingdom. Now, isn't it interesting how YouTube enacts its censorship policies, how YouTube enforces its own rules on hate speech on graphic content? Because, of course, over the past 24 hours, we've had this huge scandal with Logan Paul, who is basically a, an ADHD imbecile who just basically idiocracy on steroids. He uploads a video where he walks into a forest in Japan, discovers a dead body, starts laughing about it. This is a victim of suicide, hang from a tree, starts laughing about it, zooms in on the dead body, uploads it to YouTube, it gets 6 million views within about an hour. Lo and behold, it gets on YouTube's trending page. Now, YouTube's trending page is curated. They decide who gets on there. They decided this video of him laughing at a dead suicide victim hung from a tree. That's what gets on trending. That's family friendly. That's advertiser friendly. In fact, it was Logan Paul himself who removed the YouTube video. It wasn't YouTube who removed it. They left it up. And in fact, somebody's got a screenshot shot. It was reported, mass reported by uh, users of YouTube. They manually reviewed the video, seeing that it had a dead body in it, zooming in on the dead body, laughing about this suicide victim. They YouTube manually reviewed the video and didn't take it down. Again, it was, J it was Logan Paul who was forced to take the video down after apologizing, after this huge wave of outrage which again some people have misconstrued and said oh those precious snowflakes offended again well no it's this is a completely different context he wasn't censored he wasn't causing outrage because of his political views he was causing outrage because he laughed at a dead body that's why people were upset about it and you can see why they were but youtube did not take it down despite it being a direct violation of their own policies which state you can't post violent or gory content that's uh, posted in a shocking, sensational, or disrespectful manner, which obviously fit all those different ca categories. So they, they decided to leave it up after manually reviewing the video. Meanwhile, Jordan Peterson, his video gets censored in like 24 different European countries because he's defending himself against the charge that he's a white supremacist. This is the double standard with YouTube, which we saw after the Las Vegas massacre. Remember when Casey Neistat, who's another big YouTuber, tried to raise money for the victims of the Las Vegas massacre. YouTube removed ads from his video so he couldn't make any money off it to give to the victims as a charitable donation because they said you can't make money out of tragedies. Unless you're Jimmy Kimmel, who ranted about gun control exploiting this very same massacre. Did they remove ads from his video? No, they were on the whole time. Not only did they not remove ads, they put him up on number one on the trending page, which again is curated, decided by them, it's not organic. So this is the point we've made over and over again. There is a VIP tier of YouTube users who can say anything, who can do anything, who can violate YouTube's policies wantonly, on a whim. 
and face absolutely no consequences whatsoever. But if I have a pin, if I have an opinion about Islam or whatever, you've seen it. My video gets chopped down. It gets put behind a, a Berlin wall, basically. You have to appeal simply to get it back online for people to watch it. So incredible double standards with YouTube. You know, you had PewDiePie making some edgy jokes. He gets internationally vilified. This guy can zoom in and laugh about a dead body. YouTube doesn't even remove the video. Remember the rapper? We covered the fact I made a video about it. You had a rapper who came out and did a rap video in which he featured a white child being hung by himself and this other black child. Again, not even age restricted. Meanwhile, I make a video about modern art saying modern art is crap. Age restricted completely kills its ability to go super viral. And now you see ra racial justice rap video depicts white child being hanged. So you can depict the hanging of children. You can actually show a suicide victim who's hanged himself and zoom in on the body and laugh about it if you're Logan Paul. Or you can rant about gun control and exploit a massacre like Jimmy Kimmel if you're the, if you're the host of a big TV chat show. It's one rule for them and another rule for everybody else. There is this VIP tier on YouTube, which they won't admit to, which is so obviously in existence, and they're trying to hide it. Meanwhile, the algorithm, it came out as well a couple of months ago, that YouTube's own algorithm deliberately demotes any content that's not far left. So obviously, people are being punished for their political views and opinions on YouTube. There's another tier for VIP elite content creators who can do anything they want, get away with it with no consequences whatsoever. So again, everyone else is punished for their thought crime of having the wrong politics, but Logan Paul can film a dead body and laugh about it, and YouTube will put it on their trending page, and six million people see it within an hour, and it only disappears when he decides to take it down after the mass outrage campaign, which again, some people on the right have mischaracterized. They weren't outraged about anything political. It was the fact that he was laughing about a dead body. Absolutely incredible double standard by YouTube. Jordan Peterson's video removed simply because he defended himself against accusations that he was a white supremacist. Incredible. Then we have this on the subject of social media censorship. California prosecutes men for criticizing Muslims on Facebook. California Attorney General Javier Bacara is attempting to prosecute 41-year-old Mark Fagan for criticizing Muslims on the Islamic Center of Southern California's Facebook page in September 2016. What did he say? He said this, quote, the terror hike sounds like fun. That was in response to the center's sunset hike announcement. So these are dumb comments, but really should, should it be prosecuted legally for this, given that you're supposed to have a First Amendment? The more Muslims we allow into America, the more terror we will see. That was another one of his comments. Most people would agree with that, given the statistics on terrorism in Western countries. Another comment, he said, practicing Islam can slow or even reverse the process of human evolution. Again, you know, you could call it a dumb comment, but the First Amendment also covers hate speech as the Supreme Court has ruled over and over again. But now he's being prosecuted in California simply for responding to posts on Facebook. So again, all these people who make this argument, oh, Facebook's a private company, YouTube's a private company, Twitter's a private company, they can do what they want. No, you have an intersection of social media giants with the state, with government, with police forces, where they're now actively acting on these comments, which could be anything from, oh, I disagree with my government's migrant policy to something that is actually whatever you want to call it, xenophobic or hateful. But they're working in league with the state, as we saw in Germany with the Stasi, to prosecute people, to hunt them down, to knock on their door. And that's when the argument goes beyond, oh, it's just a private company. No, this is real people's lives being impacted because they said something on Facebook, because they had an opinion about a certain religion, a belief system, or a migration policy. This is genuinely genuinely terrifying and it's only getting worse we'll be back on the other side of the of the break to talk about it this is the alex jones show live breaking news at infowars.com don't go away if you are receiving this transmission you are the resistance
It's the claim that the uh, the August protest was some sort of left-wing plot. Who, you might ask, would say something so offensive? An elected representative who's serving right now in the U.S. Congress. And look at the background. George Soros is one of those people that actually helps, you know, back these individuals. Who is he? My understanding is, is that you went out with this protector of yours who swore that you were uh, his adopted godson. Yes, yes. Went out, in fact, and helped in the confiscation of property from the Jews. That's right. Yes. Was it difficult? Not, not at all. Do you think George Soros funded the neo-Nazis who marched in Charlottesville? Wouldn't it be interesting to find out? These conspiracy theories were first spread by radio talk show uh, host Alex Jones. Is this lost on anyone? George Soros is a famous Nazi collaborator. From the front lines of the information war, it's Alex Jones. Michael ZX is back. And just like we're game changing when it comes to politics, when it comes to the economy, we're game changing on supplements. I want to bring you products from the best research out there, from the best labs, the best laboratories, the best scientists that really change lives. Because I want you to get a great effect. I want you to have a great life, be healthy. I want you to see the results so you reorder it and tell your friends and family about it. Let me tell you, fungus is a scourge, mold's a scourge, and you can't battle it with this in your sinus or other areas, but in your gut, the main area you can. Myco ZX, available exclusively. Been out for over six months at InfoWorksLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Ladies and gentlemen, I only bring you products I use myself. I only bring you products that have been proven to have dynamite effects. Myco ZX is back in stock right now at InfoWorksLife.com. Secure yours today.